Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers, this is your host Ram welcoming you to your daily edition of the Cricket Happening Show here. And on this Cricket Happening Show there are three matches that I'm going to talk about and uh, I'm first going to give you a brief uh, snippet of what happened. So let's start first match, uh, it was the uh, first let's talk about the South African uh, tour of Sri Lanka where South Africa was playing their first test today. And uh, I thought the South Africans did well because uh, the Sri Lankans were bowled out for 287 on the first day of the first test itself. But uh, Sri Lanka definitely had a silver lining to it as uh, Karna Ratne, Dimad Karna Ratne, the opener, carried, the, carried his bat through the innings to make a rock solid 158. And also, well, let's say that there was some the, the Sri Lankan uh, team uh, were in real trouble at one stage at 176 for 8 but they managed to reach 287 uh, thanks to some useful partnerships uh, that happened uh, in the middle uh, with the last two batsmen Lakmal and Sandakan giving good company to Karna Ratne in the order for 287 and the Sri Lankans have also done a good job at the end of the day uh, with Kagi Sarabada uh, getting Amidst the wickets, uh, with four wickets in South Africa, were well, four for one at <coughs> close of play, losing the wicket of Aidan Markram. Uh, now, the other match uh, between India and uh, England, this was the start of the ODI series uh, between the, both the teams, and it was India were the victors, as England, on a very, very good pitch at Nottingham, uh, did not do any justice. At Trent Bridge in Nottingham, as you would remember, England scored the, their highest ever total, uh, I mean, they, they scored the highest ever total in ODIs of 480 odd, um, as you would remember, <coughs> against the Aussies. And uh, one has to say uh, that England definitely faltered, but the man, the man who really, really haunted them was none other than the Indian wrist spinner, Kuldeep Yadav, take a bow, Kuldeep Yadav. And Kuldeep Yadav returned figures uh, of a left arm wrist spinner uh, as the best in uh, in ODI uh, series so far, in the sense the best in ODIs. When he bowled 10 overs, no maiden, 25 runs and snapped up six wickets uh, to uh, really, really, I would say, uh, sink England because uh, England, as I said, this particular pitch was good for 320 or 350 runs, but England, uh, uh, you know, it, it was only in the tanks main to Kuldeep Yadav, who really, really rattled them once again as they were bowled out for 268. And uh, India made this particular victory look like a real cakewalk. And uh, India definitely uh, made sure that they are going to take full advantage of this batting pitch as Rohit Sharma went on. Uh, to his 18th century of his ODI career. He was not out on 137. Kohli made 75 and a cakewalk victory for India. <coughs> As India got the 269 runs in 40.1 overs uh, to finish the match uh, with, uh, with an 8 wicket victory and that was marvelous uh, according to me. Now the other match uh, West Indies versus uh, uh, Bangladesh. Uh, well, West Indies definitely uh, started off in a, in a sort of a struggling fashion, uh, but recovered admirably uh, to close the day at 295 for four. Uh, uh, there was a uh, there was a Craig Brathwaite uh, century, uh, 110, and Shimron Hetmeyer uh, had gone to his second 50 of his Test career. And he was just 16 short of his century when stumps were drawn for the day as West Indies closed the first day at 295 for four uh, and uh, definitely uh, a, a job well done by the West Indies with Solomon Hetmere definitely eyeing a century tomorrow in the first session on the second day uh, at Kingston in Jamaica. <coughs> so now, uh, now let's get into the three matches and because there are three matches I won't be going into a lot of details I'm just going to skim through so let's start off with the South Africa versus uh, Sri Lanka and uh, the toss was uh, won uh, by uh, Sri Lanka I reckon 
uh, I will confirm that for you. So this was the first test, the first day of the first test, uh, at, um, which was played uh, at the Gaul Cricket Ground. And uh, I'm sure the, I'm, I'm just trying to see uh, as to, uh, well, so let's, uh, let's have a look. So Sri Lanka were the ones who actually batted first and uh, uh, they, were, um, they were a bit tested uh, in the morning session uh, by the South African bowlers, Kagiso, Rabada, uh, and uh, Philander and Dale Stain, but they stood the test well. <coughs> and if you look at the card there, uh, well, uh, Gunatilaka made uh, 26 uh, of the bar of, um, of the four boundaries, but the man and then uh, Tabrai Shamsi, who was making his debut in this format of the game, uh, really beat. Um, Dananjai De Silva all ends up to clean bowl him for 11 through the bat and pad gap with one boundary. Kushal Mendes uh, was looking good, but Dale Stain got wicket number 420 when he forced Mendes to spoon a catch to the mid-off region. He was gone for 24 with three boundaries and Dale Stain would have been happy that he took this wicket. But it was Kagiso Rabada who was really, really amongst the wickets. And Kagiso Rabada fooled Angelo Matthews uh, to get caught behind for one and he also nipped out Roshan Silva for naught. <laughs> Dikwala uh, was a victim of the bowling of Tabrai Shamsi for 18 uh, and uh, definitely Shamsi had a wonderful debut uh, in, in, this, uh, in this first test because he took three wickets. Rabada got four wickets but the man and then um, and Pereira was out to Philander, but as I said, it was all about Dimut Karnaratne, who stick it, stuck it out there, a rock solid knock from him, as uh, he was the one who guided um, the Sri Lankans to a total of 287, with this individual score uh, being an unbeaten 158. This was his 50th test match of his career, and uh, he made 150, not a 158. Uh, which had 13 fours and one six. And uh, Lakmal and uh, Sandakan at the end stages, uh, really, really giving good company uh, to, uh, to Karna Ratne to um, you know, get to that uh, score of 158. And Karna Ratne carried the opener, carried the bat through the innings. So Lakmal made 10 and uh, Sandakan made 25, three boundaries. And uh, as I said, uh, it was all about Kagiso Rabana, 14 overs, 1 made in 50 runs and 4 wickets for Kagiso Rabana. Uh, Tamrai Shamsi on his debut, 25.4 5, 25 overs, 2 maidens, <coughs> 90 runs and 3 wickets. So basically, uh, the South Africans deciding to leave out uh, Kesha uh, Maharaj uh, from the team uh, and get in Tamrai Shamsi into red ball cricket. Uh, probably, uh, I, I'm not really sure whether Shamsi was making his debut, uh, uh, probably I felt that Shamsi uh, was making his debut. I, I could have been wrong, but anyways, um, as I said, the, the Sri Lankans were bowled out for 287. Uh, Dale Stain, it was good to see him in action, 13 overs, he, was, he could not uh, get any maiden overs. His 13 overs cost him 54, but he picked up one important wicket, that of Kushal Mendes, who could all be a, definitely a thorn in the opposition. Now, South Africa got four overs to face, and run, and what a what a, a master stroke by the uh, the Sri Lankan captain uh, Suranga Lakmal. He decided to um, uh, get uh, with only four overs remaining. Uh, he did, he really surprised uh, by not giving the red cherry to any of his pace bowlers and instead uh, giving it uh, to the man who has come back on the Sri Lankan team, the veteran Rangana had it. And Rangana had it did not disappoint his captain. And I thought that was good thinking on the part of uh, Suranga Lakmal. Probably he had some plans, uh, and um, also he might have seen some balls actually turn, and uh, that's the precise reason. And so one has to say uh, that on the first day itself, one could discern signs of real turn on the pitch when Tabrai Shamsi was bowling. So definitely, <coughs> the team that bats last would be the South Africans. South Africans would be under extreme pressure, according to me, as Rangana Hedeth had picked up his first wicket uh, with Aidan Markram uh, out for naught. Elgar was not out on four. Kesha, oh, Kesha Maharaj was there, uh, but uh, let's have a look at Kesha Maharaj. Uh, yes, Kesha Maharaj bowled 70 no 49, and uh, Kesha Maharaj was sent in as a night watchman. 
not or not four for one uh, i think south africa definitely have a battle ahead on the second day now let's look at the second match the second match is the first odi uh, india versus england <coughs> and as i said this particular pitch that was a good toss to win for virat kohli and kohli decided that he would insert england into bat first england um, uh, definitely as i said um, I did not uh, score well because definitely this particular pitch uh, at Trent Bridge in Nottingham uh, was due for at least 350 odd runs uh, but definitely England uh, f um, you know finishing well below par as uh, they were bowled out for 268 and it was all the handiwork of the wrist spinner Kuldeep Yadav who bowled 10 overs no maiden 25 runs and 6 wickets and as I said this is the best figures by a left arm wrist spinner in one day international surpassing uh, the Australian former Australian spinner Brad Hobb who is also the Chinaman baller as he was called um, and other than that well as far as England were concerned if you look at the card there they started off in a flash Jason Roy and Jonathan Barristow had added 70 runs to the good uh, 73 runs in 10 overs that was pretty good going but uh, you know Virat Kohli uh, the Indian captain saw that uh, the pace ballers were not able to make an impression uh, with India's pace resources too depleted uh, with the absence of Bumrah and Bhuvaneshwar Kumar uh, only having Umesh Yadav and Siddharth Kaul. Siddharth Kaul showed his inexperience in leaking 62 runs. As I said, uh, it was not a pitch but Kuldeep Yadav was the difference totally as Jason Roy uh, was out for 38 uh, of 35. There was six fours. Jonathan Barristow uh, was actually beaten by a wrong one from Kuldi Piado. I could not pick it up. It was very well up for 38 of 35. That was 5 fours, 1 6. Uh, Joe Root was out for 3. He was uh, beaten by an orthodox leg break from Kuldi Piado. Uh, out for 3 of 6 deliveries. Uh, Morgan um, uh, in, the, in the sort of a pressure created by, uh, by Kuldi Piado. Morgan fell a victim to the balling of Chahal for 19 of 20. The 2 fours, 1 6. And then Stokes and Butler had to really retrieve the situation for England as with the score reading 105 for 4 in the 20 overs and with, um, you know, um, Yuzendra Chahal, uh, the spinner, and Kuldeep Yadav in full flight, uh, they had to really uh, be a bit watchful. Uh, but, uh, they, well, they did it to a certain extent by eking out runs. But when Kuldeep Yadav once again came back... Uh, uh, he did not disappoint. He picked up the wicket of uh, Ben Stokes for 50, the two of 103 balls, two fours. Butler was out for 53 of 51, uh, five fours. Moin Ali uh, making 24 of 23, two fours, one six. Willie one. Adil Rashid 22 of 16, one four, one six. Plunkett run out 10, would not out not. And as I said, it was all thanks to Kuldeep Yadav that the England were bowled out for 268. And as I said, 268 was definitely below par uh, on this particular pitch uh, as on a, on a perfect batting pitch at Trent Bridge in Nottingham. Uh, Umi Ishiado, uh, 9.5 overs, no made in 2 for 70, but managed to get 2 wickets. Siddharth called 10 overs, none for 62. Charles 10 overs, none for 51. Pandya, 7 overs, none for 47. But look at the bowling figures from Kuldeep Yadav. Suddenly, thirdly, stood out. Uh, 10 overs, no made in 25 runs and 6 wickets on a perfect batting pitch. Suresh Rana, three was one made and none for eight. England definitely once again have to go back and see uh, as to how to deal with Kuldi Piado. As far as India were concerned, <coughs> India had no problems. The opener started off in a breezy fashion as they added 59 runs. Down was a victim of the balling volley for 40. 27 balls with eight fours, as I said. After that, a 167 run partnership uh, between Rohit Sharma and the Indian captain Virat Kohli. Uh, with, Virat Kohli, with Virat Kohli playing some nice um, hot strokes, I would say, as he compiled 75 for 82 deliveries, 7 fours before being uh, stumped at the bowling of Adil Rashid. But Rohit Sharma carried on India to victory with his 18 ton in ODIs, as he remained not out on 137 of 114 deliveries, which included 15 fours and 4 sixes. Rahul was not out on 9, and the game was all over with 10 overs to spare. India had won this game by eight wickets <laughs> if you look at the bowling uh, mark wood played today six overs crack for 55 with no wicket david willy five overs none for 25 thought the uh, bowled a bit uh, better than the others moin ali 8.1 overs no man one for 60 
Uh, Liam Plunkett, 6 hours and for 31, did a job. Uh, ben Stokes, 4 hours for 27. Adil Rashid was taken to the cleaners, 10 hours and 1 for 62. Root 1 hour for 9. And well, there are no prizes for guessing. Kuldi Piado of India, man of the match. Okay, now let's talk about the game between West Indies and Bangladesh. Today was the first day of the uh, second test match between West Indies and Bangladesh. It was played at Kingston in Jamaica at the Sabina Park. And uh, it was uh, the toss was actually won by Bangladesh, and they decided uh, that uh, they would put West Indies into bat first. Well, it all started off. The start was not good for the uh, West Indies, as um, as Mary Hassan Mirad, the right arm off, he, uh, picked up the wicket of Devon Smith pretty cheaply for just two runs. After that, um, uh, they they still lost some wickets. I mean, um, <coughs> they lost uh, with a score on 59. They lost the wicket of uh, Kiron Pavel. Again, uh, LBW to Matthias and Miraz, the random off for 29 with four boundaries. Uh, Shai Hope was out for 29 with two boundaries, being a victim of uh, Tajul Islam. So it was all about the Bangladeshi spinners amongst the wickets today. But Brathwaite was still there, uh, compiling a very, very well crafted knock as he took up the responsibility admirably and he had the company uh, of, um, uh, of, uh, of uh, 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 Shimron Hetmir. Shimron Hetmeyer also uh, did a good job, um, you know, combined very well with Brathwaite and Salman Hetmeyer, um, uh, you know, Shimron Hetmeyer would have done himself uh, uh, a great deal of good with this particular knock as Brathwaite and uh, as, um, both of them uh, started chiseling together a partnership from 138 for 3. So Bangladesh definitely had things under control when they had the West Indians at 138 for 3. But um, Brathwaite and uh, Hetmir compiled very well. Hetmir played some nice pull shots. Uh, Brathwaite, as you know, he has that um, a sort of a door um, a skill where he, he really can stay at the wicket for quite a long time. That's what he precisely did as he carved out 110 runs uh, with nine boundaries. Uh, that was Brathwaite's uh, contribution. Uh, but he was out um, um, for uh, to the bowling of Medias and Miraz Radamorphy. Uh, and Hetmir... Uh, really impressed with the shot. He was the only one uh, to hit one six that he hit uh, over long off. As Hetmate was not out on 84, definitely eyeing his maiden test century. He has already had a 50 under his uh, name. Uh, so this was his second 50. So tomorrow, 16 runs uh, to get for Hetmir uh, to get into the uh, to uh, get into the uh, century bracket there. And I'm sure he deserves that. 84. Uh, with nine fours and one six. Chase was not out on 16 along with Hetmere as West Indies uh, closed the day on a healthy 295 for four. Uh, so Bangladesh definitely uh, allowing the advantage uh, of early wickets to slip away uh, with their bowling. Jay 10 hours and four minutes, not for 22. Shakil Vasan, 18 hours, two minutes, not for 51. But Mandy and Miraz was the most successful. 27 hours, nine maidens, 90 runs and three wickets. Tajul Islam, 21 hours, 3, made in 65 runs and 1 wicket. Kamrul Islam Ravi, 8 hours, 1 made in none for 22. Mahmudra, 8 hours, 1 made in none for 20. So that's the match situation. So as I said, uh, uh, since there were three matches, I had to do a real skimmer uh, to really bring down, bring up, uh, you know, cover up all the three matches, as you would understand, dear friends, subscribers. So as I said, pleasure uh, once again uh, speaking to you on this uh, daily cricket show of mine. Uh, with more to come on my next cricket happening show which will be happening uh, tomorrow uh, it's good night